Amendment over Grassroots Citizens Panel. Next topic, same-sex marriage, of course, is before the Supreme Court. That prompted my guest sitting here next to me, Ryan Sorba, to go undercover. You've made a uh, career, if you will, of fighting back against the gay mafia, fighting back against the LGBT uh, lobbying, the powerful lobbying group in America. You went undercover in Palm Springs, California, to ask gays if they were born that way or if it was a choice. Let's take a look at one of these videos. Scientific, yeah, okay. We, we brainwashed ourselves thinking that, oh my God, it's not normal, and we think it's uh, something that we were born with. No, it's a choice. All right, there's one woman getting very colorful by saying it's a choice, but that's one person. Um, are you saying that, in, that the, the theme was the people you spoke to in this gay bar told you it was a choice? Yeah, well, you know, the left-wing pro-gay movement uh, says we're born this way. It's right. immutable. We cannot change. They've used this idea uh, in Prop 8. In Prop 8, a large portion of the case had to do with whether or not they were born that way and therefore whether or not they would have suspect classification, which would make the burden of proof uh, more difficult for the pro-marriage side to make. So um, whether or not they're born that way plays into suspect classification, and that's why I wanted to get interviews. They, they have no scientific evidence that they're born gay. There is not one study. The second time I went out, um, after I learned that a lot of molestation had occurred in these cases, which that video is full of uh, admissions of molestation. Meaning, meaning what? Uh, when they were 12 or 13, an older man molested them. And then, and then they leaned towards that lifestyle. And well, yeah, and then a gay activist told me that there's something called imprinting in which a child's first sexual experience if it's um, pleasurable um, while it's happening is with a man that, that, it, that experience will be imprinted upon them, A, and B, a lot of times the memories when they're young, it will be uh, suppressed or repressed. I believe that emotions are fluid. The sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system can be conditioned to feel this way about that or that way about this. And that's why it's important that we defend marriage so that we socialize kids to be healthy with their sexual orientation. You say you have more videos coming out with a lot more information. Give us a hint. Some gays stating that they want to lower the age of consent to 12 or 13. All right. Uh, Sharon Angle, what's your take on this video? Well, it's no surprise. Actually, it's no surprise. And, and what Ryan has been saying about the imprinting, the, the um, gays have had this mantra, to, it's too late by eight. And that's why they've been wanting to lower the age of consent. That's always been uh, one of their prime agendas and state legislators lectures is to attack ages of consent too, too, to attack late, too late by eight can you can you elaborate that the um chances of leaning that way are better if they're exposed before they're eight years old so state legislator we were always kind of being confronted with those things the guy that founded the the, the movement in america uh, and brought it the founder of the mattachine society uh, harry hay marched in Nabla parades now i'm what I, i'm not saying necessarily that between every person with same-sex attraction there's a connection with pedophilia but i am saying that i got a whole bunch of people with same-sex attraction uh to say that they wanted to lower the age of consent to 12 or 13 and they all admitted i was raped when i was in second grade i was raped when i was 14. my brother raped me my cousin raped me i became gay when i was raped all right, well, uh, certainly a controversial video, yeah. and, and uh, as you say, as you say, yeah. uh, those in the, in the LGBT lobby have, have uh, put, it, put the point forth. That, that, that everybody's born gay, we can't change. Lady Gaga's got an entire tour, we were born this way. Born this way. None of us were born gay. Here, I've presented people with a number of persons who are clearly gay. And I was molested as a child, and that, and that affected me. If you watch the video, you can see, and they seem like they might have been born gay. One guy's got, you know, he speaks that way, he's flying boy. I have to tell you, I was molested in second grade were his words, and it affected me. I remember it distinctly. If I might just wait, look, they, they, this trial that preceded the ruling with respect to the Prop 8 initiative, it was replete with scientific data in which people, scientists, some of the best scientists in the world on these issues, testified completely opposite to what this, quite frankly, was an unofficial poll of you in a bar with a bunch of drunk women. Well, no, actually, actually, in the Prop 8 case, for example, they had no scientific evidence. They had one teenager 
as a personal testimony. One teenager is a personal testimony to try to say that sexual orientation can't change. That teenager even said that he hasn't looked at studies which show that change is absolutely possible. You've never read a scientific study addressing the concept of sexual orientation. Isn't that true? That is true. And is it also true that you have never studied whether a person's sexual orientation can change throughout the course of his or her lifetime? No, I, I haven't. And the APA even treats people with same-sex attraction disorder because they believe in the right to self-determination, which implies that it is a mental disorder, and it is under 302.9 sexual orientation out of the way specified. Well, they can go get help from the psychiatrist. Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, uh, James Dobson, uh, Franklin Graham have all stated, signed a petition stating that if, if the Supreme Court moves forward with same-sex marriage, they will uh, practice civil disobedience. Now, Sharon, earlier in the show, you said what that meant was they would not, uh, they would not be forced to marry same-sex couples. Jen, should those uh, pastors with certain religious beliefs be forced to do so? Well, quite frankly, I don't think there's anything pending before the court, and I don't think there's anything in the Constitution that would ever allow, would for, would allow a court to force a church to perform a gay marriage. I mean, we have a right to and from religion in this country. The courts rarely, if ever, get involved in disputes among churches. Right. But so shame on them. What form is their civil disobedience? Well, Nobody's sure. going to force them to... To, to Sharon, before we go to a break, marriage. it's a good point, Jim. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that's the way that those folks felt when they were making those wedding cakes and refused to make them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's the way the Hobby Lobby felt before they were forced. They, there's so much that has happened in the last less than five years on this issue of things that we didn't think were possible in the United States. Pastors in Canada have gone to jail because they've preached out of the Bible that homosexuality is wrong. All right, on that comment, with a quick break. I'd love to see a footnote on that one. <laughs> 